are, it is time to ask what they are. A half dozen members uh, of the group were arrested about a week ago for allegedly torturing and killing a woman in her 20s. Uh, and 30s, the victim's emaciated and burned body was found in the trunk of a car in a suburb of Atlanta. Police say the woman left her home in South Korea to join what she thought was a religious organization, but allegedly ended up imprisoned in the group's basement. You see pictures of the basement there. At first, uh, because of the name Soldiers of Christ, it seemed like the group was a religious group, maybe even a cult. But police uh, have said they're treating it more actually like a street gang, which is interesting. Now, is there a difference between a cult and a gang? Can a group actually end up being mo uh, both of them? And could there be more groups like the Soldiers of Christ out there. I'm joined now uh, by Ashlyn Hilliard. She is a cult intervention specialist who helps families and uh, loved ones uh, who have loved ones in cults and other high control groups. Her organization is called People uh, Leave Cults. Uh, you're doing really amazing work, Ashlyn, because we know this is this is an issue all over the country and the world. But, but I got to ask you, have, have you been able to find anything out about the Soldiers of Christ? We did the story earlier this week. It was very, very hard to track down what this group was, whether it was a uh, a cult, now they're calling it a street gang. What do we know about them? Yeah, I'm happy to be on and thank you for your questions. Um, so it is possible that the Soldiers of Christ may actually fit into both of these categories for different reasons. I find that these categories often have a lot of overlap uh, between cults and gang. And what exists between both cults and gangs is the use of coercive control. So coercive control is an act or a pattern of acts of assault, threats, humiliation and intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish or frighten victims. So coercive control may be inflicted through interpersonal relationships in the group or directly from the group leader. It may be enacted in the form of physical, emotional or spiritual abuse. Um, author Lisa Fontes describes course of control as invisible chains. The use of power and control leaves individuals mm. in destructive group settings dependent on the group for fear of punishment, um, or they fear the removal of everything that the group originally promised to them, so they, that they worked so hard to achieve, really. So when I think about the matching clothing in the boots, um, I remember the female officer mentioned that on an earlier segment. Um, this further yep. symbolizes group cohesion. The removal of individuality is often something that is seen in not only cults, but gangs as well. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.